Yeah, I, I also, um, I'm getting, I'm really, I really like streaming services like Spotify, and uh, there are other streaming services available, but I'm exclusively, I pay for a monthly prescription to Spotify. Well, John, let, let me, let me um, follow that up a bit, because you, as you said, the, the, the management may be listening. Yes. They may be listening, but I'll, I'll, I might take this clip out and draw their attention to it, because um, you make an interesting point that you, you actually listen to streaming services. In your yeah, case, I Spotify. Listen, I listen to Spotify, but I'm not using it on the air. No. No, but then again, at, at the moment we couldn't do that because um, there's no Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi. So, but let, just say, uh, theoretically, just for the sake of argument, that um, there was once upon a time an FM studio that connected a streaming service of some kind. Yeah, I mean that, that to, would be to the signal. That would be ideal. Uh, if if um, yeah, that would really be ideal because. If if there was a streaming service available in in the studio, that would that would really be ideal for people that can't necessarily bring in laptops or tablets or have internet access of their you know or not necessarily have internet access, but not everybody has their own computer or tablet or means of. Um, technology that they can carry around with them. Well, no. I mean, it does so, seem yeah. sort of people bringing equipment into the studio. Yeah, people do. I'm, re, I'm saying... Know, bring your own device and what, reconfigure everything. Yeah, and, I understand. I mean, is, is it ideal yeah. to set, set up, do you think? Well, it's okay, I suppose, but it would just be more... It would be nicer. Well, it would, it would be more professional, I think, if, if um, we had... If Phonic FM had control of what music was available, it, that would just be. But but if it's 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 I mean um, it's practical for most of the presenters on on this station to bring their own devices or CDs. Uh, but all I'm saying is that that it would just make life easier. Yeah, maybe so in so in certain situations, maybe because you know there are always people that 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 don't have devices or CDs for one reason or another. Well, this, for one reason, the, the CDs are getting more scarce. They are getting more scarce. Um, I think you know I've gone through the 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 radio and streaming thing before, and I, I think I was saying this. Right, where you know, f five years ago, um, uh, where, especially when we used to interact with um, the good people down at Sohain a lot, I I was saying it, and I actually, I I actually um, got got somebody to agree, or Carl Munson, you might have been aware of him on Phonic FM a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. I actually got him to agree that. Uh, um, uh, broadca broadcasting in terms of radio that um, this was five years ago and I do believe that um, you know f you know basically you know even you know f years later like now it's radio is is becoming more online and um, CDs are CDs are getting less and less even though you can well yeah still I mean the, the, the even though you just for for, pe for people who don't know, I mean, Carl Munson was was broadcasting on on Phonic about about ten years ago, something like that. Um, well, yeah. And then he, then he went to, to Seal Hain and um, they used Spreaker, so Access All Aerials was was on exclusively online. Does Access All Access All Aerials still exist? I think it does. I think there's certainly an archive, and I think that I think there's still still doing things. Yes. I don't think it's but the same down there. No, I don't know. I don't know what's well. I think, like everywhere else, it's sort of closed down at the moment. But yeah, the, I think there's, yeah. there's still things going on around there. I think they're renting. I think, I think they have some services available down there. I think you're able to. This is for all disabled people. Uh, well, I think anybody is allowed to go in actually. But um, they have a specific pool built for people that need hydrotherapy 
uh, particularly hot water. Well, anyway, to cut a long story short, you you can phone them up and uh, book an hour in uh, well we're, in, we're not, in in the swimming pool. Well, we're not sure you can do that at the moment, but we'll. Find, would, do you think we can? Uh, Are you, you, sh- you pretty yes, sure that's? I am. Yes. Okay. Because, all right. Because I had a. Co- uh, I'm not going to call her a colleague, but I had a friend of mine who was um, who's disabled that I saw in the Harvester uh, a couple of weeks ago, back along, um, and uh, she goes down there once, um, once a week to have a hydrotherapy swimming um, session, and uh, yeah, that pool is available, but everybody, um, there's only one... There's only one person with a, with a support worker that's allowed in the pool at any one time. If you're if if um if if obviously if that person needs a support worker with them, uh, the person might not. The person might just want to go swimming. I, if so, you're allowed to do that. Okay. I just think it's nice. I just think it's nice that uh, that the that that these things exist. Yes. And I, I can John, see. John. I can. I can see that good old Willy over there is getting a. Rather edgy. Well, you, John, we, I'd, l- I'd just like to come back to this idea of a, a streaming service available in an FM studio. Or yes. A DAB studio. Yes. And I'll mention the DAB studio because it has been observed that if, theoretically, there was an FM signal that was attached to a YouTube recording that had been done on a mobile phone and was coming over a very dodgy Wi Fi signal, whatever, that the sound quality would not be to DAB uh, standards. No. Um, which is one problem. So, is it possible there could be totally legitimately, obviously, by mm. agreement with the streaming service, with a fully paid subscription by the FM management, uh, some kind of high-level signal suitable for a DAB, with an interface mm. that we could easily work with? Well, in theory, it's possible, but you know, it all, you all, it all, it all means investment. And, uh, well, he, 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 um, yes, but if the if the um, if the if if Phonic FM with other Exeter radio s- stations is going to go for DOB, well, at yeah. some point in time, you would, you, you, the, there's no, got to be some no, arrangement that would make it work. They'd have to do it, and I'm sure, I'm sure with your considerable charm. <laughs> that you might be able to talk them over, talk them around. Well, we will present so it in the best way possible. You should have a go. Yeah, we should make this point. Because the other thing I'd say is is that I have been shocked, yes, shocked, that uh, stock of Tony Braxton, spell my name, yes. has completely vanished from HMV. Yes. and It uh, was a rare example of a new CD yeah, and I that just, could have sold. Yes, and I would just but, like to say... Did they want to ma- manufacture any? No, they didn't. You'd be quiet. So, OK, yes, John, Um I would just like to, to um, give a shout out to Dr. Dr. Dave, if you're listening. And uh, I know that Will, when he sees Dr. Dr. Dave, he gets very excited now. He never used to, but he does now. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure with your considerable charm, you could, you could mention it to Dr. Dr. Dave when you see him. I'm sure he would love to hear your, what you have to say about it. Well, I just, I just think it's... I'm, I'm not at all convinced that the record companies, the big labels, are going to supply us with compact discs indefinitely. They won't. Even if we would like them to. They won't. They may give up on it all. Indeed. In which case, even though we have got these very reliable compact disc players in the studio, it mm. may be that a Wi-Fi signal... We're not complaining about the lack of Wi-Fi, are we, John, today? No. We recognise it's just one of those things. It is just one of those things, yes. But we're coping with it. And the the other thing I'd say is that um, we find music from South Africa. Yeah, um, by Johnny Gregg, isn't it? Well, uh, you, who? well, there's Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy and... Jonathan Joni. Yeah, and who Bar- else? Barita Afrasol. And they're still following us. They're still following us. They wow. know that we find their music somehow. Therapeutic. Th- but, well, we find it therapeutic, but we, we find ways of playing it, even though they don't send us compact discs. Yeah. You'd, you'd think by now they would, wouldn't they? They probably, yes, but yeah. they probably want us to play their music. Well, I expect they do. I expect Universal, whatever it is, out South Africa, they probably want us to play their music as well. Yeah, they probably So do. they probably don't mind where well, we it's find Well, nice it. to see... Think? No, it's nice to know that they follow us because my colleague is actually quite negative about 
publicity. He oh. believes he believes that you know ninety percent of these um, people on social media are not actually real people, and they're, oh, no, and some they're of them just are. and they're just bots. No, 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 no. Some of them, are, some of them yeah. we reply to. But no, no, I'm not one about us specifically. Oh. But I'm just saying in general, that's what you believe, isn't it? You're, you're actually quite. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that, 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 that is my colleague. I mean, you, you only have to read it, one of his emails, and some of his emails are all over the place, and so you don't quite know what it means. And then uh, you're, you're, you're trying to get hold of him, and he never keeps his phone on for very long, and he's a nightmare. Um, but my colleague is very scatty, but he does very well. You know, he means very well. So, um... Well, thank you for that. Yes, uh, but he is very scatty. 